Okay, so the name of this video, as you can see, is called the speed of voltage. And let me try to describe what we, what we mean by that. We want to look at how quickly voltages are delivered to a circuit in a couple of scenarios here. And the reason why we're bringing this up is because when we started talking about our resistor capacitor circuits here, we sort of had a bit of an expression going here that said that there is some time constant, so-called tau, which is always the product of R times C. So if you have a resistor and a capacitor in a circuit, the resistor sort of sits and moderates or slows how quickly charge can flow onto or off of the capacitor. And as we saw in a previous video, you can tune that time constant to be whatever you want just by picking a value of R and by picking a value of C, and things can sort of slow down. We saw some lights dim and so on. In this video here, what we wanted to do was make a sharp contrast between an RC circuit and a circuit with just two resistors in it that we saw before. So what I have here is a classic voltage divider. I have two 10K resistors, a brown, black, orange, wired in series here. And what I can do is connect the 9 volt battery directly to the circuit here. And you can see I have the top end of this resistor connected to the positive supply, the bottom end of the resistor connected to the negative right here, and I have the two resistors connected to each, to each other at this midpoint, the classic voltage divider. Okay, And the resistors are equal. So if I tap in and look at this voltage here at the center point, I know it's going to be exactly half of the supply voltage. We discussed that in a previous video. But what we'd like to concentrate on now is how quickly, after I attach the battery, so when I attach the battery to this circuit here, how quickly will I see that half voltage appear on the voltmeter? That's the question that we're going to ask here. So here we go. I'm about to connect the battery. Watch the voltmeter. So in 3, 2, 1, I'll say 3, 2, 1. When I hit 1, I'll connect the battery. So 3, 2, 1. See, 4.22 volts. And when I let go, it immediately disappears. 3, 2, 1. So it appears almost immediately. Now, the fiddling around of the digits there aren't any, anything to do with the circuit. That's more to do with the meter determining the best voltage to present. But as you can see, that voltage appears immediately. OK. So what we're going to do now is let's just remove the leads just for a second. Let's pop out the lower resistor. Let's just take it out. And let's replace it with a 1,000 microfarad capacitor. So I'm looking at the capacitor here that has this big 1,000 and the mu f, 1,000 microfarads painted on it. Here's the big negative side right here. I'll orient that towards the negative side of the battery like this. So I'll go ahead and put it in like that. And I want to just connect it. I want this to be just exactly where that other resistor was. So I don't quite have them connected. So I'll go ahead and pull this resistor out, connect it to that column there. And so what I have now is I have a classic RC circuit. I have the positive supply of the battery going in here, connecting to the top side of the resistor. Again, 10K resistor brown, black, orange, going down, connected to the positive terminal of the capacitor, and the negative side of the capacitor is going here to ground, or the negative supply of the battery there, and I see all those minus signs on the capacitor face right there, going to the negative side of the battery. Same question now. I'm going to, just like I looked at the resistance across that lower resistor previously, now I'm going to look at, excuse me, I looked at the voltage across that lower resistor earlier. Now I want to look at the voltage across this capacitor as we go in the circuit here. The voltage across the capacitor is what I'm interested in. Hang on just a second. It's not quite in there right. Let me just take that out. And there we go. That's better. OK, let me get it back connected there. Sorry about that. OK, here we go. OK, so again, what we're focusing on is not exactly the voltage that appears, but how long does it take to appear. So like I did last time, I'm going to do a 3, 2, 1 and connect the battery. And we just want to watch how quickly or how long does it take the voltage to appear on this capacitor. And remember, with the two resistors, it was instant. So here we go. 3, 2, 1. Look what you see there. Look at the voltage on the voltmeter just slowly rise. And it's not a voltmeter by any stretch either. So, excuse me, a voltage divider by any stretch either. So it doesn't have to be half of the voltage. It's not two resistors. It's a resistor and a capacitor. But the very important point that you want to see going on here is it's taking some time for that voltage to rise. And it looks like it's gradually even going to approach the full voltage of the battery, which is about 8.5 or 9 volts or so, but very gradually as it goes. So it gets a little boring watching the voltmeter. I'd like to repeat the experiments. Let me go ahead and disconnect the battery. And you can see that the voltage all but stops. 
And it doesn't go away because, in fact, the charge on the capacitor doesn't really have a place to go. It's just sitting here. It's eventually going down because, believe it or not, it's being drained through the meter. But as we discussed in an earlier video, these meters have a very high input resistance, something like 1 million ohms or so. So it'll gradually go down. If you wanted to speed the process up, make it go down very quickly, what you would do is take something like a metallic screwdriver here and hold it across the two leads of the capacitor to short out the capacitor. As you can see, when I do that, the voltage very quickly now drops down to zero. So there you go. I've discharged the capacitor. So I just want to repeat the experiment again, asking the question, how long does it take for voltage to appear across this capacitor in this RC connection? Is it instant or isn't it? And as you saw in the last sort of clip, it was an instant. It takes a while. So here we go. Three, two, one, and off we go. Just gradually, the voltage is just gradually going up like that. And this is what we mean by be the ability to have time constants in these circuits is taking so much time for the voltage to build up. And that time is all up to us. It depends on the value of R and C in the circuit. So I hope you're convinced of that now. Let me do a few more things and we'll wrap this video up. So I'm discharging the capacitor again by holding a screwdriver across the leads. Let's replace the 10K resistor here with the 100 ohm resistor that we've used several times now. And so if we're decreasing R, we're going to decrease that time constant proportionally because remember it's the product of R times C drives the whole thing. So what we want to look at now, how quickly does it take voltage to rise now? So here we go. Three, two, one. and the resistor's in the wrong space. Let me just stop this. I had the resistor connected wrong. Sorry about that. I didn't have the resistor connected to the power supply there. Okay, quick discharge of the capacitor once again. And let's repeat the experiment. Here we go. Three, two, one. Look how quickly it rose now. So we've gone from the 10K resistor to 100 ohms right there. So we've uh, decreased the resistance by a factor of 100 or so. And so voltage just almost immediately shoots up to the maximum. And again, what we're witnessing in there again is that time constant, the product of R times C in there. So nice contrast for you there. Hope you saw exactly what happened because we're going to come across the structure a few more times. This is the classic voltage divider here. Looks like this. This is always grounded here. And this is put up at our plus V, maybe something like 9 volts. What we're doing now is we still have this resistor here. That's still in there. But instead of a second resistor now, we're putting in a capacitor like this. This is what the circuit looks like now. So in this case here, this might have been another R right here. We, had, we kept them the same just for convenience right here. In this case here, remember, we're looking for the voltage right there. And we noticed that when we ran this thing, it was instant. That voltage appeared instantly right there. Over here, when we look at the voltage across this point right here, between this point right here, and we're always looking between this point and gra ground, I'm always trying to work that word across in when we're measuring these voltages here. This word voltage here was slow, but slow, of course, is a relative term here. And remember, it has a time constant, R times C. So when R was something like 10K, then yeah, we'll agree it was slow. It just barely crept up. We can almost count it with our eyes. But when we drop that R to the 100 ohm resistor, where the R dropped, then it was pretty fast then in that case there. The voltage just rose pretty, pretty quickly as it went up like that. And so anyway, we're going to go on with a couple more videos now that are going to use this structure, but try to keep this in mind. Try to keep this voltage and two component structure in, in mind here, but in these resistor capacitor circuits or RC circuits, it's going to be a resistor and it's going to be a capacitor down here. And we're going to use those for various different things.